Hello and welcome to Mark Codex. My name is Mark and today we continue working on our Mern Auth application. In part two of this series, we will be connecting Mongo database to our application. So let's get started. All right, since now we verified the app is actually working, uh, we need to add Mongoose now so we could connect our database to our application. And in order to do that, we need first to call that library. So what we're going to do, we're going to say const mongoose equal require mongoose. We need to call the mongoose library before the application because we want to make sure that the database is actually connected before we run our server because our server is actually dependent on our database. Once that's done, before the any any path that we're gonna run for our API in here, we're gonna set up our connection to Mongoose. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the connect method. Um, and in that method, it will take two things. It will take, uh, the first thing is the actual MongoDB URI, which is on localhost 27017. And our schema, we're gonna call it node auth the other thing is uh, we need to pass in a couple of flags uh, which basically gonna be a couple of uh, parameters that mongoose needs to be verifying before we create anything so the first one is create index true and of course you could go ahead and check mongoose js to check all what all those do and we need to add unifold topology and also we need to use find and modify and this basically will allow us to use find and update find by id and update and what else use new url parser that should be it so if the connection was successful we're gonna pass in some sort of like a console log so we could just see what is happening and we know it has successfully been connected otherwise we're gonna catch if there is any error and then we're gonna log the error and I might remove this for production purposes, but you could keep that for development. Um, other than that, this should be it. So let's save and see if we're gonna run into any problems and not. It seems that we successfully connected to the database. Now, of course, you wanna make sure that MongoDB is actually, you know, you have it on your computer. Otherwise, this is not gonna work uh, because this is actually running on the Mongo Damien uh, localhost the port that you already once you set up your mongodb onto your computer um, it will open that port for it so now we successfully connected mongoose uh, it is time to create our models which basically our schema all right so inside source we're going to create a file inside a folder called models and this file oops models and this file we're going to call it index.js I like to separate my, um, as you can see, like I like to separate things. It's, it's easier to debug. Uh, another file we're going to call user.js. And in here, we're going to create our schema. And we're going to call our mongoose library, which is going to require mongoose, of course. And then we're going to deconstruct schema out of mongoose. Now we're gonna create our user user schema. So for my user um, schema, I wanted to have for now um, a username and an email, or a, sorry, an email and a password. And I'm thinking that I might gonna make the username my email or any user gonna sign up to this website, they're gonna use their email as a username. Um, for a lot of reasons the first one is it's always going to be unique um and it's it, it's kind of basically like 
people don't have to keep creating usernames for each application you're going to create. It's, it's going to be like a, a really nightmare for a user. So what we're going to do, I'm probably going to do is that the username is going to be your email once you register. So we need to verify a couple of things. So first things is that we need to suggest the type for the username is going to be a string. The other thing is uh, I wanted it to be required uh, because you know you cannot have a user account without without a username and also I'm gonna make it unique so this will basically give me errors if someone tried to use the same the same username and a lot of you complained last videos about like the those bubbles uh, sorry I don't know like how to turn it off maybe you could suggest it down in the in, uh, in, in the comment box to tell me like how to turn it off so um, also I'm gonna just take it as a lowercase so this will basically just take care of um, any input just in case anybody like had a capital letter in there <clears throat> and we'll take care of that and also I might add a trim to this and then my index for that will be unique. So basically each time it's gonna get created, this will become unique. The other thing is I need a password field. And by the way, feel free to add any other fields like uh, maybe gender, maybe length, whatever. It depends on your application. For now, for this application, we just only need to create a username and a password. So the password type will be only as a string and then also it is required. Great. Now, last thing, what I want to do is add timestamps. So each time the user creates or update their user, um, this will basically take care of my two fields. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the first one is created at, so when a user created a username, and the other one is updated at. So each time the user updated their username or password or whatever, it will um, basically update the updated at by adding this. Before we used to have to add um, created add field and you have to basically we had to add like, you know, a new date and method and blah, blah, blah. But now it's easier by just adding this timestamp. Great. Um, Let's get back to the terminal and then now we're gonna actually initiate our user which we're gonna call mongoose library and use the model method and in that we're gonna name it as user our model we're gonna name it as user and we're gonna pass in user schema to that model and lastly we're gonna export this so we can access it anywhere great now I'm going to go back to the index.js, which is inside the model. And I'm going to just import the user from the user file, which is going to be dot forward slash user. Great. And now I'm just going to say model dot exports equal user. Now, a lot of people will ask me, why am I doing this? Why am I separating it into two different files? Well, the first one is obviously like it's easy to debug. If anything happens, you could just basically, or you want to update something, you could just simply just go to that user model and update it. The other thing is, um, this is part of the MVC um, modeling technique, which basically it will allow you for future reference, if you wanted to upgrade your database or add new schemas and tables to your database, this will become easier just by adding a new model, a new file, and then you could just import it in here and you can access it anywhere without breaking your code. So that's kind of like the cool part about doing this, this method. So if you have like a, let's say like a post, um, a post, Sorry, I'm still getting used to typing and, and talking at the same time. So if you have like a post schema, you could just also require it in here and just say post. And that will be accessible anywhere on your application. So 
That being said, now we have just created our user model. In the next video, we will be working on building a controller that will contain methods to update, create, and delete a user. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.